Hey guys, uh, first of all, welcome MW uh, Mid South Wood Turning Guild members and anybody else who might be looking at this. Um, today we're going to talk about wood stabilization and resin casting for wood turners. Uh, and the question becomes why wood stabilizing? Stabilizing the wood, meaning no seasonal changes uh, in, in with uh, moisture or temperature during the year. It's, it's, it's a resin, it's a thermal setting resin that impregnates the wood to become one solid unit, not just the exterior, but all the way through the wood. What can and cannot be done? Well, you can utilize uh, some real punky wood you have laying around. Uh, wood that you might consider throwing away, don't throw it away. Go ahead and stabilize it and it becomes something uh, very unique and, and useful. Either hand chasing or uh, uh, jig threading, it makes a fun fantastic uh, item to thread. Uh, normally, the threader, the uh, thread chasers would, uh, would start off with probably the best thing out there is box, English boxwood. This is a piece of English boxwood I bought, I don't know, six, seven years ago, $20. It's probably at least double that now. Another, another top quality wood is uh, pink ivory. This is $22 about six, seven years ago. And I guess you could probably figure double that now. Uh, here's some blackwood, very heavy, dense, makes it beautiful, uh, thread, uh, beautiful for threads. It holds its thread. Now you can thread about anything. It just won't, a lot of the woods just won't hold the thread. And when you start using CA glue to stabilize those threads, the CA glue will really dull those tools pretty darn quick, and this won't. As an example, this is something I just did yesterday. This is a piece of burl that is stabilized. Can you see the focus in on that, those threads on that? See how nice and crisp and detailed they are? Can you see that, Larry? Larry Sefton is here. He's a photographer and an ombudsman for the, for the group. Stabilization, in order to do that, you're going to impregnate it with an impregnating resin, which is heat activated. And the, the item of choice there is what they call cactus juice. I'm not going to get into that now, but we're going to go through this different process. Everyone says that to be a wood turner, you have instant gratification. This is not instant. This is over a period of a number of days. So if you just bear with me, and that's why we have to film this now. We're going to do 15, 20 minutes of a process today, 15, 20 minutes of a process tomorrow, and so forth. But in order to do that, uh, all the manufacturers that, uh, or the, the people, the people who do this say you have to get it below 10%, some people say 5%, and you have a more effect, a better effect, if you do it down to 0% uh, uh, moisture content. So the way to do that is, is we're going we're gonna to just take a little quick look at what we're going to stabilize. What we're going to stabilize, are the, I've cut these blanks up to fit these molds, and this is what we're going to be working on for the next few days. This is a maple burl moisture meter. We're going to stick this in here, and I don't know, we should get less than 10% probably. That's 7, 8%. Can you see that? That's 8%. Now, this is not completely effective, and the reason is, this moisture meter won't, re most moisture me meters won't read less than 5%. Let's see what this is, just for curiosity. That's 9%. And I assume this other piece is as well. I just wanted to show you, show you that. What I always do is I'll take all these pieces that we're getting ready to stabilize, or actually uh, take down to 0% dryness, and I'll weigh them. And I've used this uh, little uh, weigh, weigh bowls to see if they're, they're uh, completely dry, et cetera. And I always take it, just go, give it away, and that's 2.8 grams. And I'll write it on here. That's 2.8. That's 3.2. This is yellow box, by the way. It's a, a burl from Australia. And this is 2.4. Now we're going to take these and put it in the oven over here. Okay, guys, we just finished weighing all these three pieces, and this is what we're going to be putting into these two molds. I've got 2.8 ounces on that one, 3.2 on this one, and uh, let's see, 2.4 on this one. 
we now have to go ahead and get the moisture level down to about a zero percent. And what I use to do this is this oven. This oven is nothing more than a Black & Decker toaster oven. Fairly inexpensive, I want to say between the 80, 85, 90 dollar mark, somewhere in there. The downside to this is that it's not that accurate if you read off this, this temperature gauge. Suggestion is to get one of these thermometers, they run, they run about nine to 10 dollars, and that gives you a more accurate reading. What I'm looking to do is get about 220 degrees Fahrenheit. And why 220 is because water will boil at 212, and you want to go slightly above that threshold in order to get steam generate the moisture out of there. And we do this for 24 hours. What I don't want you to do is take this these th wood like this into your own oven in the kitchen. Your wife will send me hate mails. So don't do that. We're going to leave this for 24 hours. We're going to take it out, weigh it, and see what we get, and then we're going to stabilize it. Okay, just bear with me. We're going to come back tomorrow and pull it out of the oven. Okay, guys, welcome back. It's a new day. Uh, we've, been, we've been drying this wood at 220 for 24 hours actually 25 and a half, almost 26 hours. Uh, we're going to take it out, weigh it, and then we're going to put it in some resin. So let's go ahead and pull this out. And when you want to do that, probably wear something protective like a, a glove or a, something like this. This We're going to re-weigh this. Remember, this was at 2.8. Where's my... This is at 2.4 right now. 2.4. I'm going to write this on here. That's at 2.4. Okay, let's see what we got here. This was uh, 3.2 is now 2.8 and this was 2.4 it's now 2.1 okay now the thing we want to do now um, is now that these things are fairly hot they just came out of a 210 degree a 220 degree oven for 24 hours Ooh, a little warm so I want to put them in a plastic bag until they cool down. We don't, at this temperature, we don't want to put them in the resin. Remember that resin is heat activated. And we don't want that to prematurely start activating. And if it does, it will be on the, ex, on the outside of those, that wood. And it will seal in stuff that hasn't been activated on the interior side. Before I go on, let me just, let me just give a hats off, a hat tip or to three guys that I watch on the on the YouTube, and I think you'll get a lot of benefit out of watching their videos. One is a guy guy named Casey Martin, another guy is Zach Higgins, and the other is Jake Thompson. They all have a lot of vi YouTube videos on this process, and they're all wood turners. So I think you'll get a lot out of watching them, probably more, much more so than you're watching me now. Okay, let, we're going to let this cool down for a couple hours till it gets to ambient temperature. Then we're going to take it and put it into the solution. Okay, so now that that's cooling off, I want to talk to you a little bit about cactus juice. This, this isn't all that expensive. This is one's about ninety to a hundred dollars, probably around a hundred dollars uh, by the time you get shipping and so forth. And they just changed the formula on this. Uh, it used to be that when you put this catalyst, before you put this catalyst in there, you could keep this for about a year on the shelf. Now that they've changed the formula, you could probably keep this for up to three years. And it used to be when you put this catalyst in there, it would be about two months worth of use. Now you could put the catalyst in there, and it's about one year of use. The nice thing about the cactus juice is that it's, it's, it's non-toxic, and you can clean up with just soapy water warm water and soap. Easy. Uh, the, 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 um, the couple things, and I'm going to talk to it when, when I start pouring. I just got this, by the way, this chamber. This chamber is, 
I do a lot of small stuff. And when you put the wood down into the solution, it's going to float. So you have to have some way of, of, of weighing it down under, under the solution because the solution has to come up about an inch, at least an inch over the, over the product. Uh, and I've been using this pot over here and this pot. And, and, and what I end up doing is, is getting one of these paint buckets in here. You can see that solution in there. By the way, you can keep reusing this, it, it, which is it's a nice savings. Uh, this stuff doesn't evaporate. You can reuse it over and over again until it's finally gone. It's going into the piece and then go ahead and, hard, and it's hardening. So uh, I'm going to use this into this once, once uh, this is about, this is about cooled off now. It's been a few, almost a few hours. We want you to keep it into the solution almost twice as long as it took to get the bubbles to, to zero out. Does that make sense? Uh, you want to keep your pump running, running the whole time. Uh, and uh, let's see, I'm, look, I'm going down this, it's like a checklist. They give you some nice detailed instructions. The cactus juice, the people who make cactus juice, which is uh, Turntex, uh, they have some really good tutorials on their website. And they also bring this uh, nice uh, uh, documentation for you to kind of follow. And it gives you a nice highlight on that. So let's do this. Let's uh, take this. Let's see, see what the temperature is on this. OK, it's about 87 degrees. I think that's going to be OK. You guys go along with that? It's 87. It's going to be OK. Um, what I want to do, though, is I want to add a couple more things that I took out of the oven the other day to add it to it. And we can, go, we can do everything at once. OK, where is it? It's uh, oh, right here. And when I get into the casting to, uh, in a couple days, I'm going to explain while I always have a couple already, a couple pieces that are already stabilized. Bear with me. I've not done this in this chamber before. So we can go ahead. Okay, and what they say is you put this, this is not a weight by the way, this is a plastic insert that you, you, you push down until it touches and it's got like an oval shape to it and then you, you push down on, on this end of it and now it's, now it's, you have now effectively locked all those pieces in place. So let me pour the, the resin in here, the cactus juice. And I want to come up to at least over, at least an inch over. So I, I'm going to guess that's okay. That's that's probably more than an inch, but that's okay. Let's put that in here. And remember, the cleanup is just nothing but soap and water. So let's try this out. Now this is going to get a little noisy. And what I want to do is keep this on until all the bubbles have gone. And uh, then I'll, let it, I'll shut it down and I'll let it soak for almost double the time it took to have those bubbles go away. I don't know if you can see this over here. I can control it. Those bubbles came up too fast, so I, so I took off... Until it settles down, then I can put it on a full vacuum. Can you see that, Bob? Yeah. See the bubbles? There. Okay. Not now, it's a full blast right now. It's, what's that, 28 or 29 inches of mercury? And you'll let that bubble, I don't know, it, I'll probably be getting into my pajamas tonight and come out and check it. It may or may not, if, it, if it's still bubbling, I'll let it go to the morning. Okay? Cool. 
it's just okay guys welcome back uh, if you remember what we did a couple days ago we put the uh, the pieces into the cactus juice we've put a vacuum on it and let it bubble I checked it later that night and it somewhere around seven eight hours later all the bubbles just seem to disappear or just get down to almost none and I shut it down so it's been soaking now for a day and a half just let me add a couple more safety items to this if I can it's not really necessary to seal this up because it's a, cactus juice doesn't evapor, evaporate but you don't want to store it in anything less or anything more I should say than 85 degrees Fahrenheit so if you're working in an unconditioned uh, non -cond air conditioning shop in the summertime here in Memphis where it's been noted to be over 100 at certain times take it and bring it in the house and store it in the house they, they say it's it's not going to work well if it gets above 85 for any length of time the other thing too is that although it's really not that necessary about gloves I still like wearing them you might think about putting some eye protection on because it is a liquid and it could splash at you so let's just take it I've already the vacuum was taken off this a day and a half ago and it's just been sitting here like that and it really isn't necessary to seal it up because this stuff really doesn't evaporate so if you remember I took this this uh, piece of HDPE plastic and wedged it in there and re and now all we got to do is that's going to hold those pieces back as I pour this in here and we can reuse this cactus juice on another project that's what's nice about it reusable okay in the meantime I have taken the, the oven over there which we're going to go over here in just a second I've taken the oven and preheated it to 200 degrees uh, 200 it between 190 and 200 is a sweet spot for this to activate and they say the time element of this is not an exact science. Okay, I just pulled it out of the pot, guys. And what I'm doing now is just kind of cleaning it off, drying it off. Otherwise, a lot of this will crystallize on the exterior. And it's a little more difficult to clean up. Uh, sometimes denatured alcohol helps with the cleanup work. But uh, this, this seems to help, too. To get it, it's not going to be perfect but you're going to get a dryer. Let me... We've got an alternate plan here, Larry. I'm showing how I dry it. You can see some of the liquid on that. I'm just drying it off. Okay. It's not a problem. It really isn't. This is, remember, this is uh, non-toxic, and it's non-flammable, and it's easily cleaned up with soap and water. Does that make sense? See, that's a little, I guess that's it, isn't it? Just these five pieces. They say um, between, uh, I don't know, two to three hours, and what that dependent on is, is dependent on if you remember I just said uh, 190 to 200 is a sweet spot and that's dependent on that 190 to 200 degree temperature get to the center of that wood now if you have a pen blank obviously it's probably only going to be about an hour to an hour and a half and it, it can be uh, fully activated if you go more than that it's not going to hurt it if you, you 200 degrees for six hours it's not going to do anything different but you don't want to go over 200 degrees especially when you first put it in because somehow it, it that cactus juice will seep out and it, it crystallizes on the outside and that's not what you're looking for so as you can see I've got a, exactly 200 degrees in here so we're just going to taking these pieces out and putting them in and I since they're burls I like to put the the points of the burls on the downside one thing is is it's not controversial but there's a lot of talk on chat sites when people stabilize the wood and that is early on it was suggested that you take each individual piece and wrap it up in the aluminum foil and I found that when you wrap it up in aluminum foil 
it gets kind of messy. So what I've do is I just put the aluminum foil on, on the lower pan, and it's on a rack, and that rack uh, should collect all the uh, cactus juice and, and have it crystallized down below. Okay. Probably should have just patted that dry a little bit more, more than that, but it's, it's going to be okay. So that's external stuff that's going to be turned off anyway. So what we got to do, and I'm, one of my philosophies is anything worth doing is worth overdoing. So remember I just said two to three hours roughly? Let's go three to four hours, and we'll pull it out and see what we get. And it should be fully stabilized and ready to go for a mold. Okay? Okay, guys, uh, let's talk about molds for a minute. I'll tell you what my favorites are. Uh, I'll tell you where you can buy them. and tell you how you can make them. My favorite mold of all time are these silicone molds, which I did a number of years ago. You have to have a form, get the silicone, put it in, let it dry. But these are so easy to come apart. You, you put, when your piece is in there, you just pull it open and it just pops right out. Another kind of mold you can get are these that you can purchase. This is from a company called Pitone Stubby. And let me just open this up for you for a minute. This is made out of HDPE plastic. Uh, and they, they come in, basically the companies that make all these, they start off making them for pen turners and, and go up from there. Uh, but you can get them in any size, or most any size, I should say. I'll show you my biggest one here in a minute. Let me just open this up because I want to show you something. This isn't just screwed side to side screwed on. They actually have a, I don't know if you can see this. Can you see that mortise in there? This rides in that mortise. Can you see that? You got it? Right here. And that makes a nice real tight joint. And of course then it's screwed together. The, the thing about using this HDPE or PVC, if you're going to use PVC, is that you must use a, a mold release. And this is the mold release that everyone seems to be going with, and this is the only one I've ever used. And you spray a nice liberal amount in the inside, and it's a little bit easier to, to eject the mold, your, your resin, once it's finished. A bigger mold would be something like this. And uh, this is five inch. Uh, cubed. And this is about the biggest these guys make. If you want to get bigger, you're probably going to have to stop making it yourself, from what I can see. Now, early on, I was, I was doing, uh, I was making with PVC. And again, you still got to spray down in that PVC for the mold release. And this is nothing but an HDPE uh, cutting board, which I cut up and put some uh, hot melt glue around to seal it. Okay. Another way some people will do is they'll actually take uh, the same PVC pipe and instead of doing hot melt glue and the, and the HDPE base, they'll just go ahead and use tape at the end of the day. They uh, tape the sticky side is facing up, so if they put a, a piece of wood down in there, they could actually kind of secure it to the base, to the bottom. They don't have to put any, any uh, uh, hot melt glue or anything like that in there. Now, there's another company. That, and I think this company is called Turner's Ho Ho uh, Warehouse. And what they do is, th to uh, one step further on this PVC pipe, is they make these inserts. These are, these are uh, silicone inserts that go in and seal it. I just, I just made this so I can lower it down into the pot once it's ready. And that's real easy to do here. Those are, I think, roughly five bucks a piece or some there, somewhere thereabouts. Um, so molds, uh, I guess that's about all I, c I can think about in talking molds. But again, I think, go back to my original statement, I think these, these silicone molds, and these, last, these will last forever. Make some of these, get the ambition, get your silicone, make a, make a mold, and you'll have them forever. Easy. Okay, guys, just to refresh a recap of where we are, we did our wood drying, and we did that for 24 hours. 
we took, took it out, put it in the cactus juice. The cactus juice probably took eight or nine hours, something thereabouts. And we let it soak for a day and a half. We took them out of the cactus juice, dried it off, and we put it back into the oven at 200 degrees, where it, we, I guess it's close to four hours, just under four hours. So let's go over. I've shut this off a while ago, but it's, so it's all cooled down. So let's go over and pull off the three pieces we're kind of interested in, which is these right here. We're going to go over and take a weighing. Uh, um, and then I'm going to show you what the difference is. So let's go ahead and weigh this up. That's 5.4 ounces. And again, I always, for some reason, I always write this on here. But look at the recap on this. When I first started this thing right out of the, the pile, it was 2.8 ounces. And then we went through the drying process, and it dropped the, the moisture out of there, and it went down to 2.4. Then we put the resin in and got the resin heat activated. It's now 5.4. So it went from 2.4 to 5.4. And this one, well, I, th I guess I didn't write it on that. Nope, didn't write it on those. Anyways, you get the idea. So now what I've done, I, oh, I gotta get the, I get the correct mold. Give me just a second. This is the mold that I had cut up for this, and this is, a, again, the silicone mold. Let me get two more pieces out of the oven, and we'll go into that other. Yeah, this is the, these are the pieces that I wrote on here, too. Let's just check this out, just, just for grins. This is, uh, this was 2.1. Now it's 2.8. And these I had cut up so they fit into this uh, longer, actually go this this way longer mold and this was 2.8 and now it's 3.4 and this should go somewhere around here I, what I want to kind of give the effect of is like a rip maybe a river coming through this and these these are my two primary pores and I think I can I don't have a lot of resin left over but I think I can get I'm going to fit, combine those, and I think I can fill both of these cavities up. And what I always do, if there's anything left, uh, I always have a, some side. These have already been stabilized. I put, I put, I'll put these into these little silicone molds. These are basically wine stoppers, blanks. And then if this, th this resin is so expensive, it, and if it just has a little bit more, I think, and if I think I can fill this up, I'll go ahead and, and, and dump the rest of it in here instead of wasting it and that it, but these are not my primary pores right now my primary pores are these one of the things you'll you'll realize is that this wood should not float because remember it's got that stabilization on it but a lot of times these these molds here sometimes might move it and i want this wood to be stabilized i've got a couple little pieces of uh hdpe right here. I'm going to put those on there and kind of lock it down so that doesn't, that doesn't move. Oh, I forgot something. Here it is right here. And I told you about this the other day, too. You should remind me. This is the demolder. When you're using the HDPE, you should spray that. It makes getting that mold out of there a lot, lot, lot easier. So now let's go back to where we were. We're going to put these two blanks in here. We're going to put the HD. P.E. across the top to kind of lock it down. Get a piece of duct tape. You know, you, I think you can fix about anything with duct tape and super glue. Isn't that, isn't that the saying? Something like that, Larry? And this is just I don't know, is this a, a cheap insurance policy? Okay, so that's ready to go. 
this is ready to go. Oh, let me get that out of there. Yep. This is ready to go, this is ready to go, and these are kind of on standby if I have any excess left over. Uh, let me just talk a little bit about uh, resin, guys. The resin, I can only speak from experience on two different types of resin. Actually, three. Remember, you remember that art resin that I, I went through a demo with you guys a while ago, making the tops for the Beads of Courage boxes? And it was, a, it was called art resin. Remember we made stuff like this that went on the, on the uh, Beads of Courage boxes? That's just something I did here a while back. But what that is, it's, it's an art resin. And the art resin is nothing but a surface enhancement. And I'll just show you that. It's one of these deals. You've probably seen me use that. But this is not for that. This, for this purpose, this will not work. On that one, you had to mix it for like uh, eight, so six, no, no, four minutes. And it has a 45-minute start time. And you have to kind of babysit it for a while and blow the bubbles out with a torch. And this, you don't have to. What we're going to do, if we have any bubbles on, in this, this, we're going to use aluminite clear. If there are any bubbles in that, it's going to come out when we put it into this pressure pot. The pressure pot, it puts enough pressure in there. to It doesn't get rid of the bubbles, but it reduces them so small that your eyes can't pick it up. That's my understanding of that. Now, this is aluminite clear, and it's, it's, you, they want you to warm the mold up. I've got a heat gun to do that. Work time is seven minutes. Now, seven minutes... It, it seems like a long time, but you sit there and mix it for two or three, and then you start into this other stuff, and if you forget something, you've got to run across the room and bring it back. Those seven minutes get chewed up pretty quick. Try like I, I have right here, and I'll, I've got to still bring an air hose down here, but I, I've, in my mind, I had to go through my, the thinking process is, I, have I got everything here I need? I'm going to go through that process in my head. And then it should be real smooth, and we should be able to get it in the pressure pot in about five minutes. So this stuff here is, its work time is seven minutes. The demold time is one to two hours, meaning once it's under pressure, uh, you, get, it, you should be able to take it out one to two hours. I always wait to the latter part of that. And remember my philosophy, anything worth doing is worth overdoing. And, it, and again, this aluminite clear, part A, part B, it's mixed on a weight ratio, by weight to weight ratio, and that's, again, that's why the scale is. But if you were going to have anything more than about two inches, in other words, a deep cast molding, you need what they call aluminite clear slow. A little bit different. This has got 12 minutes work time. You get 12 minutes to work it, and, and you get four hours demold time. So it's 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 uh, activated. A lot, little slower than that, but if you're going to go a, a deep pour, say, say like uh, something like this, over two inches, uh, you, you're going to be using that other stuff and not this. Otherwise, it's what's called, it kicks off what's called exotherm, and exotherm is, is the heat, and you get, it's so thick, and when you kick off that heat, it sh it, it'll probably put cracks into the, your big casting mold. So that's why you've got to go to that other aluminite slow. So this, today we're just going to look at aluminite clear and clear B. Now, let me ask, let me just talk a little bit about the coloring. I think what we're going to do today is just go to a dye. And I'm going to do a, a, a very, very light color to try to get as a translucent color. If you wanted to go to a uh, opaque color, and by the way, a lot of them are opaque, you're going to be putting in what's called, uh, oh, this happened to be pearl X. They're pigment, pigmented powder, uh, powdered. Uh, but my point in that, and there's a lot of them here, but my point in telling you that is if you ever use that mica powder, wear one of these, because that mica powder is so fine, the dust kind of just kind of floats through the air, and you don't want to be breathing that stuff. We're not going to be doing that today, but I just want to bring that to your attention. Um, so having said that, let's, let's kind of prepare for this. And I'm going to pull down the air hose. You don't have to. Okay. And let me just, 
I, and, oh, before I mix, let me call your attention to this pressure pot. This pressure pot is made by CA Technologies. Uh, there's a lot of guys uh, that will take one of the Harbor Freight paint pressure pots and modify it. Uh, I didn't want to do that. I'm a little, I'm, I haven't heard of any major accidents, but it just, to me it just doesn't seem as good and sturdy. These things are made for resin casting. It, it, and uh, it's got your, uh, here's your, uh, your air throttle cock here that will let the air out. Let me, let me sh shut that. Your valve and your pressure. They say in, the minimum pressure you need is 40 to 50 PSI minimum, a uh, 40 PSI minimum. I keep mine up there about, I guess that's up around 60 or 70. They have a, they have a safety valve here that will blow at 80. I always try to get it about 10 PSI below that. I don't want to get it up in that danger threshold area. So let's just take this off here. The other thing I like about this pressure putt of these big old wing nuts and so you can really get a good good hold on those and clamp those down. What I've done is I've also taken a piece of plywood, just a plywood disc, simple enough, put a hole in it so you can get your finger in it, but the bottom of this is slightly concave and I don't want the epoxy, if it ever drips out, getting down there. I could probably put a napkin on this uh, and if it ever does, you can pull the napkin out or if it ever gets on that plywood you can go ahead and and uh, just replace the plywood. That's easy to do. Okay. These I think are about three three thirty nine. I believe it is. You'd have we'll have to check on that. But I want to say in the Harbor Freight you're around a hundred dollars. But then you still add some parts and this is the safety aspect of it. I just didn't like doing that. That's just me personally. But uh, if you want to, you can go on YouTube. There's a lot of guys that show you how to modify those, those uh, Harbor Freight pressure pots. And a lot of them have used them for years and have had no trouble. I just wanted to stay, stay with this. So look, w what I discussed is we're gonna go with a translucent color, but I want a very light translucent color. And what I have learned is, number one learned, when you're gonna play with dyes, put your gloves on, you'll end up with some colored dye at the end of your finger and they, this, Next year at Christmas time, you'll be looking and say, how did I get that there? Well, it was a year ago. <laughs> it's been on there. That stuff is, th these dyes are so concentrated, you've got to be careful of them. So let's put the gloves on. <clears throat> and what I will do is just take, if, if I were to take, mix up a batch, even this full amount, and put one drop of dye into this, it would almost make it opaque. It's just too dark. So what I will do is open this up. I put a little dot, if it's open, put a little dot right there. You see that little dot of blue right there? See that little dot of blue? Can you see that? Here. I'll put that there. And I, when, I, when I get ready to put the dye into the resin, I'll just take uh, the end of a Q-tip, the, the, not the, the, the absorbent end, but this end here, and just dunk it in there. And that's going to be enough to give it just a slight color. So staying away from that while I mix, I have to keep that in mind. So, so let's do this. We're going to start mixing. And what I'm going to do, remember I said you mix by weight. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour this whole part. I could go to part A first. I'm going to pour all of that in, even if we have some left over. It's no big deal. I have another two bottles coming. So, uh, okay, this cup weighs eight tenths of a gram. So let's let me let me see something here. Hello. Okay. Oh, yeah, eight tenths of a gram. Now you zero it out. Now it thinks there's nothing on there. So let's just let's just open that up. And that's. Now remember, you can keep these apart and it can all last all day, but as soon as you get these things together, then you get seven minutes to work. That's 8.4. Okay? So let's go ahead and z zero that out. And now we're going to go to 8.4. I should be able to get 8.4. If I can get this off. Damn it. 
going to have to use some pliers or something. There it goes. There it goes. That's why I go to the gym. No, I'd rather go low. So, okay, here's the cup. Zero it out. I'm going to zero that cup out, and now I'm going to put about five. I'll put the other one in first, you think? B in first. Eight point six, eight point eight. Oh, so I've only got eight out there. Let, let me let me put some more in here. Let's see, I gotta go to nine. Eight. There it is. There it is. Okay. The other thing I want to tell you, talk to you about is these stir sticks. I always take and cut off the bottom just like that because uh, you want to get down at the very bottom of this cup. These cups don't have ridges on them. they got a flat bottom. And you, when you start scraping the side, you need to get all of that mixed in there uh, and probably work this up for about two or three minutes. Uh, some people actually use a silicone stick. I don't do that. I just get these popsicle sticks and cut the bottoms off. When, when you first start mixing this, it's kind of got a milky color in there, and you'll see like little swirls. It, it's almost like a, 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 a contrail behind this stick. That means it hasn't been quite mixed up yet. So let me do some vigorous mixing here. I want to go ahead and just do this too while I'm mixing. I'm going to warm these up. Just a little bit. Get that a little bit warmer. Okay, you can see. Now there is there are bubbles in here, but that whispering. Can you can you zoom in there, Larry? That little whispering uh, that you see be, that was going behind the, it's, well, there's still a little bit in there. I want to make sure that's all out. And I'm scraping, as I'm doing this, I'm scraping along the sides, I'm scraping along the bottom, making sure everything is not clinging to, the, to it. And now what I'll do is I'm going to put that, the, the, uh, this in here. Remember I said I just did a little bit of, now, that's not much, was it? Now, can you see that? Look at how much that colored it with just a, it's like a, it's like a pin drop on there. And I, and I think that's almost a little bit too dark, but we're going to go with it. Again, I'm still mixing, scraping the sides, mix it all up. Make sure there's no blue streaks in there from the dye. I think, I think we're probably pretty good with that, okay? So let's give it a try. I'm going to pour. Let's put that there. Put that there. Remember I said I put these two in case we have extra left over? It looks like we do. So let's go ahead and do all of it. By the way, this, this white mat you see here is a silicone mat. I still have some more left over. That white mat you see there is a silicone mat and it'll clean up this stuff real good. Okay, we'll drop it down. Remember I said we got a flat bottom down there? Okay, good enough. Get a little bit of spillage down on the, on the, paper towel there 
And we're going to go here. OK, so we got it in there. What, how many minutes do you think we are? Probably about four or five minutes, would you just say, Larry? Here we go. Now, there's a lot of, some people will go through the sequ a, a big sequence and how to, how to close this up. What I do is I'll go ahead and get the big wing nuts, just barely tight, barely tight. Really tight. Then I go through the tightening process. I'll, I'll do the two opposite ones, a couple cranks. These two opposite ones, a couple cranks. Go back to the originals, a couple cranks. These here, a couple cranks. These here, a couple cranks. These here, a couple cranks. Okay, now we need the hose, which is right here. I got this valve shut. I'm going to open this up all the way and, and get the regulator. It's uh, what's it coming up? It's about 40 psi right now. I'm going to get it up there about 70. Coming up on 60. It's 60, 2, 4, 6, 8, 70. Shut this valve off, and I'm done. Take the, take the pressure off, and that's going to stay at 70 PSI for as long as that cover is shut. Well, let, me, let me flip this for you, and I'll give you a good view of that. You see that? What, what's interesting is, is this thing starts heating up. It's already starting to activate. It's at 98, and the, the room temperature here is, uh, what is it? Let me get it. 73. So it's already at 98. So you can, and you can feel it starting to heat up. And I've looked, as usual, I've created a mess. Uh, be careful of that dye. That dye gets, like I say, you'll never get that off. Okay, so now our next, our next solution is we have to wait for up to four hours. Uh, I'm sorry, this is the two hour one. This is a slow one. Two hours. In two hours, we can pull it out of the pot. Uh, I might just leave it here overnight. We'll pull it out tomorrow and see what we get. Yeah. Okay, guys, if you remember me talking earlier, uh, the demold time for this particular product was four hours. I left it in overnight just because other things to do. And the, 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 Keeping it, the pressure on it for the overnight doesn't hurt a thing. So now it's still pressurized up there to close to 70 PSI. So we need to depressure it, take a look inside, and see what we get. So I'm going to turn this uh, air outlet valve uh, open, and it's going to get a little bit loud, but and that's how you depressurize it. You'll see, you'll see this go down. See the point here? Just about zero. I'm going to open this up just to make sure. 
Now that pressure inside should be equalized. And this is what I like about these big wing nuts. They're easy to turn. Three, four, and a lift, and we'll go take a look and see what we get in here. Okay, first things first is this bowl. Uh, can you see inside there? And this is why I like these uh, silicone molds. It's real easy to take off. I'll hold that up there for you. Here's the, here's the other big one. Can you see in there? And this is the two extras that are probably going to be wine stopper blanks. And there again, they're in the silicone mold. This is, this is how easy the silicone is. I really like working with this stuff. Okay? Now let me just show you something. Can you see how clear that is? This is the stuff that was left in the, uh, in the stirring cup yesterday. But see how clear that is? All those bubbles are out of there. Now take a look at this. This is one that has not been in the pressure pot. Can you see those micro bubbles in there? Okay. So let's take this out of the mold. And this is a, a little bit more labor intensive in that you've got to take the screws out. And remember what we did? We... Uh, uh, let, me, let, me get, let me get something right here. It's, it looks like it's got a nice clear I get, I'll get that off later. So let's get the screwdriver. Open this baby up. And again, this mold is made from HDPE plastic. Uh, you can make your own, or you can buy it. I like, I personally like buying from this guy here, because all these sides are mortised, mortised in. I'll show you that when I open it up. Okay. Okay, we gotta work, we gotta work at getting this out here a little bit. Okay, let's let's, let's do this. Here we go. It's a little little stubborn today. Again, this is this is why you put the mold release on it. Uh, okay, let's see if we can get get down in here. There we go. You see that? They make a nice handle for, uh, I don't know, a pizza cutter, would you say? It, okay, so now all we have to do is take one of these babies to the lathe and create something with it with our artistic ability. Okay, guys, uh, now that we've gone through the whole process of drying, stabilizing, uh, and, and, and mixing up the wood with the resin into the pressure pot. We've taken it out. Now we have a finished product. Now I'm going to turn something real simple. Is nothing. It's just really a, a wine stopper. And I think everybody can use a wine stopper. But here's one I've done previously. I just want to point out a couple of things. First of all, this top here, can you see that? That's translucent. It's probably a little bit more. I like it a little lighter than that. We can do that on the next go around. But the other thing I want to point out to you is, is this. Hang on. For, let me get. 
is see how this flares into this. Okay, what, what I want to talk to you about is, is first of all, my selection of wine stoppers. I prefer the Ruth, Ruth Niles. She makes what's called stainless steel. And I'm not, I don't get a kickback from her, but if you were to go on and just buy, they're, they're a little bit more pricey than the stainless steel. I mean, in the, uh, 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 what am I trying to say? The, uh, no, the uh, metal. What am I trying to say, Larry? Chrome. Chrome. Chrome Thank plated. you. Yeah, take that. Heck, don't put that in there. Uh, it's, but take a look at this chrome piece. Can you, can you zoom in and see that? That's pitted and, and rusted over about, I want to say, a seven or eight year period. And the roof niles, the stainless steel stoppers, is a lifetime warranty against pitting and rusting. Now, these are a little bit more pricey than these. However, and I think a single, if you just bought the single, it's $7 and something. But as you add more to it, and there's no reason the club can't collectively put together an order. You get up around 100 of them, and you're down about $5, a little over $5 a, a stopper. But to me, they're, they're just probably the best out there. They, and they run, the threading on that is a 3 8 16 So, I, I, and that's the reason that I, I get the Ruth Niles. Now, one of the things is, is when you screw the, the finished product onto the post, you want that, that to be nice and flush. You don't, and to keep that flush and not angular, this is what I do is I'll put a, I, I used to do it on the drill press, but this is a lot easier. This is, I think this is about an inch, uh, what is this? I think it's about an inch and a quarter, force and a bit. That's about right. It doesn't have to be an inch and a quarter. It could be an inch as well. Uh, okay, the, and, the, and the reason I'm doing this is because this, this shaft is perpendicular to this, the face of this uh, forstner bit. And all I'm doing is making a flat spot on this blank. So, and I'm not going in far. All I'm doing is make sure it's, it's just, just a little ways. It's a flat spot. Can you see that? Yeah. It's, it's, now, it's now cut that whole circular surface there. Follow me? Now what we have to do is drill a hole. And what you use, this is, remember I said that the thread count was 3 8 16. In order to do that, it's a 5, five 16 drill bit, which I will now put in here. And I've got a mark on there as to about how far I want to go. And we'll just go ahead and make the drilling. Now I've made the hole, <laughs> clean it up, take the 5 sixteenths drill bit out, and I'm going to put the tap in there. Now, this is the part where you don't want to turn the lathe on. You're going to do this manually with your hands. Tighten this up, make sure, it's, make sure this is straight. Come on, get in there. There we go. And this is going to line up. And all I'm going to, don't turn the lathe on. All I'm going to do is start pressuring, turning it with my left hand, turning it with my right hand as it advances. And it'll go in there. You'll start getting a little bit of resistance. When you get a little bit of resistance, go ahead and just back off a little, and it'll break those fibers. A little bit more, a little bit more. And you can rest assured, because it's, again, in this Forstner, bit that it's going in straight. Okay? So let's go ahead and do that. And what I usually end up doing is I will go ahead and release this, back this out, and then I do the rest by hand because it, it just seems a little easier if you do this by hand. It's now going in straight. I started it off straight, and it's going in straight. And take it right down. When it gets to the bottom, you'll feel it bottoming out, and then just back it off. It 
should have a nice, clean, crisp, threaded hole. <laughs> That's all there is to that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up put, taking this off and put it on a mandrel so we can turn it. The mandrel I get is this here. Uh, and I think there's a couple places that sell this. I believe I got this from Ruth Niles, but there's another place called Stainless Stoppers or something along those lines. And they'll sell one. Not only is it, this is a Morse number two taper, they also sell it when they will go on to the thread count on your lathe. It could be quarter, 33 millimeters for you uh, Canadian guys and in the, in the inch and a quarter for you high-end American guys, okay? So let's take this off. Uh, yeah, let it fall on the floor. Now I'll we'll take, put the mandrel in here. And by the way, for you guys that are, I wouldn't say cheap, but frugal. How's, how's frugal sound? Does that sound good? That's a good word, right? You can make your own mandrels. I made, nope, this isn't it. I made my mandrel a long time ago. It's in here somewhere. Yeah. Nope, that's, a, that's an off-center mandrel. Here it is. I got it. It's a mandrel right here. You just take your 3 8 inch bolt, cut it through there, screw it on, and this flange right here sh should be the same diameter as the uh, flange on the Ruth Niles stopper, or the stopper you're trying to cut. Let me get, let me get in here. Ah, come on. If my fingers weren't so fat, it would be easy. Here we go. And, by the way, all these stoppers come with this little protective rubber coat on it, which helps the thread. But you can see the diameter here is the same as this flange diameter, is the same as this flange diameter. Make, once you, once you uh, cut the wood down to that diameter, you know it's going to be a nice, clean, flush cut or, or fit onto the uh, stopper. Follow me? Okay, so that's something if you don't want to go ahead and buy. But in the meantime, let's take, uh, let's take what we just cut up, or just, I should say, threaded. And screw it in. By the way, there's also a little HDPE uh, gasket in here, which... Remember, when, when this thing is turning, it, it's, it's tightening. And sometimes it gets a real bugaboo to get off. And that little HDPE gasket helps. Now, I, a lot of guys will take and put their live center there. And the, remember, the live center has a point on it. What I like is these things from Rubber Chucky. It's, it's a... I guess that, I don't know what kind of plastic, a rubber, it's a rubber, I guess it would be, a rubber, and it doesn't leave a mark, a mark on that piece, but it also pins it between centers, which is a safety item, and one of the things, when you start working the end, trying to get that off, it's, it's like a fulcrum, you, you're, you're locked in here at the headstock, and you're working out here, and you get a little bit of vibration, this reduces the vibration. So let me put uh, a little head, head face shield on, even though it's a small piece and pinned. You never know. And we're going to go ahead. Now, there's a lot of ways you can do this. You can, so you guys have the easy, easy wood tools. I'll talk about that in a minute. I'm just going to use a, a spindle roughing gouge just to knock the corners off. We'll see what we get. I go lightly at first. By the, by the way, when, when this, uh, it didn't work? Oh. It, it, hey, uh, if, if you just, 
if you focus down here, you won't see my face, correct? Right. Let's just take it off. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to turn the rest of this with a shovel. <laughs> <laughs> I got an axe out the car. <laughs> okay, you ready? Yep. Okay, all we're doing is, is taking these corners off. Let me speed it up just a hair. You have to be a little bit slower with the plastic. Not really. Uh, however, I found that sometimes the plastic, if you use a, a wood turning tool on plastic, it doesn't do as good as the easy wood tool. Easy wood tool seems to work better on the plastic, and then regular lathe tools work better on the wood. So what a dilemma that is when you have two, right? You do? I'm just trying to get this, this cylinder round. Can you smell that? It smells like glue or something. An unusual smell, doesn't it? Okay, let's just stop and see what we got. Okay, still not round. It looks pretty in there, though. Okay, let's just go this way. I'm looking at the reflection and I can see that it's not, it's not quite round yet. Sometimes this, these wood turning tools will actually grab that plexiglass and, and really it cuts some divots out of it. I, I never have understood that, but can you, can, you, can you hear that? Can you hear that? I don't know if you can see that, but it's, it's not... It, we're going to fix that, but it, you can see the little chip outs in there. So let's let's do this. Let's take a, a easy wood tool and see what that does. Seems to put a, a cleaner cut in the in the plastic, but just about as good in the wood. Okay, now we got to start. We got to start thinking about design. And I'm just going to do something real simple. I'm going to make a, 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 a bead, a right-hand sided bead at the top and just flare it down into uh, the diameter of the uh, wine stopper. Okay? And all I have here is a spindle, spindle gouge. I'm, I'm doing a, what they call is a, uh, a, 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 a a, a tapered cut, and I'm, and I've got I've got it against my body and my hip. I roll it so I'm getting it cut, and what, see where I'm moving my hip. That's all I'm doing. It's called a shear cut. I'm going to leave this end a little bit on the thick side because you want something to pull against.
And when the diameter down here at the on the left side of the piece I'm turning equals the diameter of the flange, I know I've got a perfect a perfect fit, and that's just about there right now. Now I want to put a, a bead on the right side, and for you, um, and still I'm going to keep this here as long as possible, just because I've got it pinned. For those you for those of you who are right-handed uh, turners. The right-handed side of a bead is probably the easiest turn you'll ever do. And you still, I still have it up here against my body. I've got my finger here. I'm, if I'm going to the right, I always put my finger on the top. If I'm going to the left, it's off to the side. So I, ro I finish where I roll it. But I've got it to the right, and I'm going to raise, rotate, and swing. Raise, rotate, and swing. Raise, rotate, and swing. I'm looking at the profile. See how that... That, that uh, res resin will go ahead and, c and collect back here, and every once in a while you just got to do that. But I'm raised, rotate, and swing, and you get a nice round curve. And I'm watching this against the profile of the background. Raise, rotate, swing, come back in here a little bit more. You guys like that profile? Is that okay? Good. I'm making gentle cuts. Working toward the center. I think I wanted a little bit rounder here. There we go. Now we can clean up the back side. I can pull that away. But here you want to be very, very gentle. Remember it's a fulcrum. It's, it, if you put too much pressure on here, it's going to start vibrating on you. Yeah, that's a, I'm just going to keep that top kind of flat. Can you see that? Now it's all frosted up because it's obviously it's been cut. So now what we're going to do is, oh, on a, wait a minute, I see a flat spot there. I, I missed it. Can you see that flat spot? I didn't get it all oh, right here. Can you see that? Yep. I missed it. It doesn't take long. We'll get rid of it. And I'm just blending that surface in. Let's see if we get it. Did we go up oh, just a tiny bit more? Get rid of a little bit of these tool marks. Okay, that looks okay. So now let's go ahead and do some sanding. Now this is kind of the boring part. I'm going to start off just to get, I got a couple little tool marks in there. I'm going to start off with, uh, I guess, one, what is it, 150, 180. This is the part where you're going to have to zoom speed up because it gets, <coughs> gets a little boring. I'm not going to turn the dust collection on because it would be too loud. I normally keep my dust collection going anytime I'm sanding over here, and it'll take all of this up. I, I'm not doing it now because we're we're doing a filming. If we're going to speed it up. You're not going to be able to listen anyway. So if you want to turn it on, go ahead and turn it on. You want to do that? Yeah. Just, is this it? 
Yeah, but I gotta open the door first. Open the door, Larry. Yeah, go ahead. What's that? I said, I said, you can't do reverse turning you can't press. Ah, uh, you could, but you got to be careful and that doesn't unwind on you. Yeah. Okay, let me get two more. Two twenty. This is three twenty. Got to put some uh, denatured alcohol in that. The denatured alcohol will clean out a lot of that sanding. But also does something else. Gives you a good insight of what you're what you got going on. Okay, watch this. Look at. See in there? Okay, you're starting to look inside there. Let me get. have that denatured a little bit of magic juice on this thing. It's starting to come alive. Okay. Um, now, at this point, when I, I've taken it up to 600. At this point, I can do a, a sometimes, a, a, with especially a translucent lucent piece I will do um, a wet sanding I can still do the same thing dry and I'm gonna
Okay, that's 600. This is 800. Let me do a little bit of cactus juice, fun juice in here. Get a lot of juices going on, don't we? Can you see in there? It's going to get better. That's just giving you a preview. That was 800. Let's go to 1,000. Twelve hundred. Let's see what it looks like now. Get to look quick. That means that we're not there yet. Okay. Now what I'm going to do? I, I think I got this off of. Amazon. This takes it into even to higher grit. Oh, wait, I got a fifteen hundred here. Let me do the fifteen hundred, then we'll go to this this stuff. I forgot about that. Once you get up in these upper grits here, you really—it's not just sanding; you're polishing. Now, this would be okay if you were just using, uh, if you if it was just all wood. But since you get the resin, we're going to go through this. And this is a, this is 1500. You want to get that you want to get that acrylic that uh, resin as clear as possible. That's uh, 1,800. This is uh, 2,400. And 4,000. We don't really have to go much beyond that, and I'll show you why. Getting a little clearer? Okay. So now let's take this out of the. Uh, and do something different. You guys, I know you guys, uh, we've had uh, Mark Soleil around for a while giving us lectures, but I actually put Mark on this, and now he always gives me credit for it, and I got it from someone else, so I'll give whoever that person was that told me about this, I'll give him credit. This is called Von X. It's a finishing uh, composition for, for, for plastic. So why not? This uh, resin is a plastic substance, is it not? So let's just go ahead and charge this uh, wheel up and see what happens when we do this. Larry, you want to, uh, Bob, you want to take a look at before and after? Can you see that? It's, it's okay. It's somewhat clear, right? Now watch. Know, can you see the clarity now? Oh, yeah. Huh? Now here's another thing I'm doing too. I have, remember this wood was stabilized and it has the resin in the wood. I am not putting any finish on this wood at all. All I'm doing is polishing it. Does that make sense?
Ooh. You like that? Can you see it? Okay. How simple is that? Except we're gonna we'll, except you remember they always they always tell you when you do something really good, you know, I'm gonna take you to the next level. You've heard that expression. I'm going to take you guys to the next level. I would say this is pretty darn good for a finished product. But if you would look, I could see some, oh gosh, you have to really squint to see some microscopic stuff in there. But let's do this. Let's put a polishing compound on this. And, and a polishing uh, compound. This stuff is the same stuff that you would use uh, for, what happened to those, uh, let me find them, I put them down here somewhere, let hang, oh here they are. This is the same stuff that you would use uh, to, to clear up uh, headlights on your car. This is a number one. Put a little layer, running out of space here. Uh, Oh, this, this. <laughs> Jacob's Chuck. F wasn't Forrester and Jacob's, weren't they neighbors? I think they were. They were, yeah. okay. Like Procter and Gamble. Procter and Gamble. It's Smith and Wesson. Um, okay, now we need... Laurel and Hardy. Laurel and Hardy. <laughs> and Pete and Repeat. Now I put... No, I didn't. I put the number one. Where's the number one? I get the wrong one. Here it is. I already get this yucked up. This is the, just as I've taken it through the solutions, this is a number one. All I'm going to do is kind of rub this on. Where do you get the discs? Uh, I'm not sure. If, if you go to the website, I think Amazon, most likely I get everything on Amazon. I know you can find it on Amazon. This just takes a little bit more extra time, but boy, is it shine that up nice. Can you see how clear that is? Is, is that coming through to you? That's only on one. Okay, let's go to number two. That's three. This is my number two. I just had it. Oh, right here. And we'll put the number two solution on. It's just a little bit. Rub it on. Put that there. Turn up your music and go for it. This thing is slinging. A it's probably a little wet, wet from the, the project I was doing yesterday and slinging water at me. Yeah. It, I tell you, you know, it, it's amazing. You'll tell, you'll tell somebody, hey, there's, no, there's nothing on that wood. You didn't. You didn't put any type of finish on it, and it's just, to me, it's just gorgeous. Uh, give me just a second. I got to wipe that off. I just use these uh, these cl terry cloths, I guess they're called. I forget the tack cloths, something like that. I should have probably cleaned the top of that up a little better. Yeah, I can I can redo that top there. And then you do it at number three. And number three is basically just a it's a it's it's probably a polish with no compound, no no abrasive in it. Uh, let's see, where's the number three? Right here? Yeah. So you, you do headlights uh, for... Uh, Safe. 
The way the stock market's going now, I think I might need to. Okay. I would say we're finished. It didn't take long, did it?